Let's take a look inside a T12 soldering iron bit. Now, these soldering iron bits are quite clever because there are three connections. You've got the outer sort of ground connection that is sometimes used. It should be used, but sometimes it isn't used. And you've got these two connections that not only power the heating element, but also sense the temperature by having presumably a thermocouple in series with the heating element. And we can test that. We can test the thermocouple by getting the fluke meter in because it's got the uh, crock clips on it. And we can see the voltage being generated when we heat the soldier iron tip up. So here is the fluke meter. It's bigger, it's bolder, it's rougher, it's tougher. In other words, sucker, there is no other. It's the domometer, the posh meter. This will appease the, uh, the meter aficionados. So let's stick the leads on here. I will turn it to the 300 millivolt DC setting. And then I shall get a little blowtorch and we'll heat it up. And if it does have a thermocouple, we should see a voltage being displayed in here. Oh, straight away we're getting a voltage showing. It's not a very high voltage, but you wouldn't expect too high a voltage from a thermocouple. I'm not sure what it would be uh, in here, because there are different types of thermocouples. And they're just different metals in a junction. Okay. I think this is enough. We're up to about four millivolts, which is good enough. This is also now probably quite hot. The idea of a thermocouple is you have two metals in a junction, which can just be a little weld. And uh, that junction with dissimilar metals, depending on the temperature, it generates a voltage. It's quite handy. It's very robust. Is this super hot? That is super hot. We'll tell you what I'm going to do now. To see the construction of this, I'm going to put it in the vice of knowledge and I'm going to take the Dremel and I'm going to slice it from one end to the other and we can open it up and we can see what's inside. I shall do that now, but I won't Dremel it in the video because it will make a lot of noise. So I'll do that right now. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. And I have to say that some aspects of this are very different to what I was expecting. I thought that this was white ceramic and it went all the way up to the very tip of the iron, but it's not. Most of the area inside this is a void and it's just two sort of Kevlar covered or PTFE covered wires going out in the middle of it. And they're not the same metal, the wires. That's interesting too. The white bit at the bottom that I thought was ceramic is actually chewy plastic. And these metal rings... Uh, basically have a little uh, strip that goes in the way and down and crimps round the wires that are coming down the inside. The heated end is a insert that goes into the end of that tube. So really, from this point downwards, it's just a void of air right down to the bottom for thermal reasons. If we take a look at the tip, we've got the two wires coming up with their sleeves and uh, one goes up the middle of a cylinder, a ceramic cylinder, and joins onto the heat element wire. I'll zoom down a little tiny bit. There is the thermocouple that is right up at the tip here. And uh, it then has the wire spiraling around the outside of that ceramic tube. And then there's a slurry put in the outside that is then used to pot it into this uh, copper head. Now, because this is a thermocouple of two dissimilar metals, I wondered what would happen with these the fact there's another wire coupled onto the same heating wire. But it turns out that these wires are of different composition. Because if I uh, held a magnet next to this one, the one that's going up to the middle, to the thermocouple, it had very weak attraction. It didn't really attract to the magnet at all. Just virtually nothing there. But the other wire, the one that's uh, coming a lot up here and was actually sort of spot welded or bonded onto this other end of the heating element, it is steel-based. It sticks easily to a magnet. Interesting. Um, and once they go down to the bottom here, these uh, this plastic uh, base here, the whole lot seems to be injection molded in with these metal uh, plates folded round into a sort of ring. And with the little strip coming off them, the little strip goes down inside and there's the crimp there where it crimps onto the wires going down to the bottom. And you can actually see the ends of the wires just popping out the end here where they've been clamped in place for the uh, injection moulding system. 
I can show you a rough image of this. It doesn't really tell you much more than I've shown you already. Here the wires coming up. Uh, one goes up the middle of that tube, bonds on with the thermocouple here, and then spirals around the outside and bonds over onto the other one of the different metal. This is uh, the copper tip, and uh, this seems to be covered in a slurry and then potted into here. I guess they put a thin slurry on it first, but then pot it into another slurry just to make sure it doesn't short against the sides. Um, and that's more or less it. The wires come down, these little strips duck down inside and run down the side of those wires and then just crimp onto them at the bottom. Very neat. Um, the way it measured measures the temperature, they often have a MOSFET pulling up to the positive rail to turn the heating element on. So this is the heater and there is the thermocouple. So I'll just say heater. And the way it measures the temperature is it alternates between turning this transistor on to heat it and then just dips it off every so often and just checks the temperature by seeing what voltage it's seeing across that. And uh, the circuitry to protect against the 24 volts has a 10K resistor or higher and then a standard diode because the thermocouple voltage isn't ever really going to exceed a few, say, 100 millivolts. Uh, so it's not really going to exceed that for a volt to that diode, and then it goes to the op amp. So when this turns on, 24 volts will be getting through here, but it will cap it to about 0.6 volts, and it'll ignore the output of this because it's not actually reading the temperature at that point. And then the MOSFET turns off, it measures the voltage. It can actually see the voltage at that point, and then it provides feedback to the processor. All very clever. It's an interesting direction they've gone. It's quite interesting how they make these. But that is it. Um, it's quite a sophisticated little thing. There's a few different variants in these. You get really short ones, you get the ones with the little uh, collar on them, but they're all fundamentally, by the look of it, the same sort of technology of that uh, thermocouple on the heat element. All very clever, very, very slick indeed.